Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking all about hiring your first employee. This is a big step, and some of you already have employees, so this may be a refresher just on what you need to do. Uh, But either way, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? Hey, high five. Thanks for joining me. If it's your first time here, have a look around. Hopefully you dig it. There's like 230 episodes for you to binge on, catch up on. You can see really bad ones and really not as bad ones. Uh, But it's everywhere you can find podcasts, of course, and uh, also on YouTube. Uh, If you're one of the people who watch every single episode and you, more importantly, buy your supplies through me and get the Cool Kids sticker... Well, then thank you. It is because of you that I get to live a lavish lifestyle that I do of eating ramen and uh, off-brand Pop-Tarts. So thank you so much for putting in your orders. And if you want a a supply guy, if you want to, like, let me get some cheddar, if you want to, like, I want to repay you for doing videos, I'm sorry, off-brand Pop-Tarts are not awesome. Here's some of my money. My number is 862-312-2026. It doesn't cost you any extra to have me put your orders in, but I would love to do that. That's how I get credit for sales. So let me do that. Even text me, say, yo, Jersey, everything's in my cart, man. And I can go ahead and just click go. If I click go on it, I get credit. You pay the same amount, and now you got a guy. And it's like an awesome high five. Also, if you haven't yet, I don't know what you're waiting for. But please, please, search it after this. You keep forgetting, right? American Window Cleaner Magazine, awcmag.com. Get American Window Cleaner Magazine. It's been going since 1986. We revamped it like a year ago. Um, I own the magazine now, so it's absolutely awesome. At least that's what I think. And you're going to love it. So go there, get a subscription, or join the sticker club. It's only $4.99, and you get a sticker sheet every single month. Anyway. Go do that, awcmag.com. Do it. Do it. Either way. Uh, So today we are talking about uh, hiring your first employee. Let me preface this by saying we have a ton of people. You're listening right now. Maybe you have employees. Maybe you have 10 employees. What this is all going over is some of the fundamental basics of hiring an employee. And if you're new, if you're a one-man show, if you're a single operator, if you're just starting or just growing... We're going to talk a little bit about how to hire, what to look for. Hiring is probably the most scary thing that we do. It just is. Hiring sucks. Hiring sucks. I personally just uh, literally two days ago hired uh, another assistant uh, that we run uh, for all the companies and things that I have. Um, But uh, yeah, it just, oh my gosh, I, I went... Hiring sucks. Just understand that if this is your first employee or your 10th employee, hiring sucks. It's the worst thing you're ever going to do. By the way, not even affiliated with Mr. Dan Platt on Blue Skies, but they're like a recruiting service. Go through them. It just makes things easier. Anyway, but hiring, there's certain things you want to think about. There's certain things you want to keep in the back of your brain when hiring. Because the process is a little bit scary, it's a little bit overwhelming, I know, but it's not as scary as you think. It's not as scary as you think. First off, let me preface this all by saying I'm just some dummy. I don't even run the mic anymore, otherwise I'd show you my mic, but I got a new laptop. But I'm just a guy that sits in front of a wall with stickers, which we're lacking, by the way. Look at this. I got to get the sticker sheets up. But... uh. The big thing with hiring is there's some legalities on different things, so talk to somebody about it, but for the most part, it's really not hard at all. But there's a few things to consider just right out of the gate when you're hiring. Keep these in mind when you're hiring or when you're planning on hiring. It has to be a process. You've probably been thinking about hiring people for a really long time now, And you're like, I got to do it, 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 I got to do it. You just haven't because there's just so much. But here's some things to consider. First off, hours. The hardest part about an employee, if it's your 10th, it's easier. If it's your first, second, third, it's harder. 
Because here's the thing. An employee, for the most part, wants 40 hours. You may have 40, 50 hours of work now if you're a one-man show. If you give all that work to somebody, they have that amount of time, but they're working by themselves. If you're working together, now you have 20 hours of work, right? So hours are a little bit hard, but I'm going to tell you right now is that as this is growing and as your employee starts, a lot of times if you say, hey, you're coming in on the ground level, we're going to get you in, which means that every time we hire somebody, they come in under you, which means that you get seniority and everything else. But as this starts, I may only be able to get you 20, 25 hours right now. I'm going to try everything I can do to grow this thing and blow it up. But I just want to let you know, let them know. People are looking for 40, but sometimes they're like, yeah, that's cool. Like, listen, we'll do hours. You could do sales. You could do everything else you want. We're going to grow this thing. A lot of the techs that I hired were okay with being a little under that. Some techs were like, I want to do 50 hours. Always want to do 50 hours. But some of them are okay with it. So just make sure that it's out there. If you're not going to start off with benefits, then let them know there's no benefits. Hey, just a heads up. We're going to talk about... uh, my favorite thing ever is temp agency. We're going to talk about hiring through temp agencies later in the show, which will go back to benefits. But for the most part, and check everything, check plans, check all that. But f- figure if you're going to add benefits, not going through a temp agency, you're just doing benefits on your own, adding $2 an hour. It's about $2 an hour added uh, for a benefits plan for yourself. So if you are adding benefits, it will allow you to hire better people, but sometimes people don't want to take the benefits, which is cool too, right? So yeah, if they don't take the benefits, you can always offer them like, you know, an extra dollar an hour or something to entice them. It's still going to be cheaper for you to have them not have benefits than to have benefits, but something to think about. Days off. Another thing to like let people know when they're looking at applying is that we have paid holidays, paid vacation, paid blah, 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 right? Depending on how you do what you do, that depends on who you're going to hire. Remember, an employee, as much as you're like, oh, this is going to suck so much money out, I know. But as much as you can pay them and as much as you can show them that they're just respected, the better off. It is harder to hire somebody new than keep somebody on. Remember that quote. I'm telling you, remember that quote. So what are you going to do for days off? Hey, we do a vacation after a full year of working here. That's pretty common, right? We do sick days after first year, you start getting sick days. You get vacation, maybe you put all the sick days into the vacation time, right? Yes, all that sucks, sucks. But put the plan in place. If you want to do vacation, but you don't want to be uh, stuck with your pants down when they take vacation, say, hey, we do vacation. You can take vacation time. Just give me at least X amount of notice so that I can plan it in the calendar, right? Those are all the things to think about before this even starts. Once you understand that, you'll understand what your position is starting to look like, right? Right. So how do you do it? How do you hire somebody? You've gotten kind of to that 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 point and you're looking to the how. The how do we actually go about hiring somebody? Well, I'm a big fan of uh, HR companies. They do charge a little bit of money to kind of run the books. On that side of things, they set up direct deposit. They do all that. They get you the paperwork. They follow all the compliance stuff by hiring an HR company. That, of course, adds to what you're paying your employee. I know, but it will save you a ton of headaches. Now, some of you will be able to go through simple QuickBooks, uh, QuickBooks hiring. Um, There are different ways that you can actually hire uh, and run the payroll yourself. Payroll is not hard. There are certain legalities you have to follow, but you're already doing that with taxes anyway, right? Quarterlies, you got to submit, all that fun stuff. If you hire a service, temp agency we'll talk about later, or you hire a, a payroll company, That takes so much of the headaches off. I don't want to learn code like, you know, city, county, state codes for employment. I don't want to do that. I also was uh, audited by the state of Wisconsin uh, a couple times for the employees because the dollar amount we were bringing in, they're like, how do you not have employees? But we ran a temp agency. So I did have employees, but there's somebody else's employees. 
So when the auditor would call and say, hey, we need to plan this, blah, blah, blah. We're having discrepancies. But I'm like, I don't, I don't have employees. You have to call these people. They're their they're employees. Oh, done. I don't have to deal with that. A lot of perks, right? So the how is super easy. It, it makes it easy for you to do that. So don't necessarily worry about the how. Look up QuickBooks Payroll. Look up payroll services in your area. Call them up and say, hey, I'm looking at hiring my first employee. I'm just wondering what the costs associated with that with you guys are. And go from there. <clears throat> it's really, really a benefit. It just takes so much burden off you. I would never recommend running your own employees through your own self. It's just a burden you don't need. Remember, we're hiring employees to free ourselves up to be able to do more sales and window cleaning, get more jobs, build the company, I don't want to hire an employee, but then have to take on another role or another job to be able to hire the employee. It sucks up a bunch of your time, right? So either way, that's my suggestion. Hire a uh, company on that. But how do you know you're ready? This is kind of the big, big question. I probably get this question, I would say in the top three uh, questions, if I took like a yearly total, I get this question all the time, hundreds of times a year. And the big thing is, is that you know you're ready when the situation arises for you. Somebody else, let me give you my, my story. When I started my company 16 years ago, I did one job, one job before I hired my first employee. Because I knew in the beginning that I wanted to focus on running a company, not working for a company, if that makes sense. I wasn't looking to be a tech. That wasn't what my goal was. My goal was to build a company. By the way, mindset unlike that, somebody asked me, well, well how, how did you do that? Why did you choose that? Blah, blah, blah. I just knew I like business. I like the act of business. Window cleaning just happened to be what I was doing when I started that business. But in your case, no matter where you are in business, you can make that decision too if that's the way you want to go. There's no wrong way. But if you decide, hey, I want to run this as a business. I want to build an empire. I want a business, a corporation, a company. I want to do a company. I don't want to be just a window cleaner. Make that switch now. By next year, you'll get everything into play, right? It's not hard to kind of do that side of it. But I knew I wanted an employee. So hiring an employee for me after a one job is the path I was taking, and I knew that's where I was going and that's what I wanted to do, that's why I did it. It doesn't mean that's right or wrong, so it doesn't matter what position you are. Maybe you've been doing this for 10 years, maybe 20 years. Maybe all of a sudden you're like, whoa, like how am I gonna retire in another 10 years, 20 years, if I don't have people or I'm not building a company? The big thing with owner-occupied, uh, owner-operator style, right? In my opinion, Again, there's no wrong way. You guys make the most amount of money. If you just are doing it on your own right now, every dollar you make is your dollar, right? You're not paying an employee. You have less cost than anybody else has, but you don't have something that is sellable. The asset that you have is not as valuable as if you had something where you could hand it to somebody. So. What, with that being said is if you do all the work yourself, say you're doing $100,000 a year for just simple numbers, and you go to sell that company, you are not going to make anywhere close, anywhere close to what somebody else would make if they had employees. Because you're not buying a business. You're buying the opportunity to do the work, right? So maybe a company will buy you to absorb the customer's Maybe somebody who's just looking to kind of do their own thing will buy you for their, you know, the customers. But when you have employees and you have a business, I could sell you my company. You've never done window cleaning. You've never done anything. Here's the company. The employees, they all do the work. They do all that. You're running the company. That's why people buy franchises. It's not for the employees, but it's because the structure of the company is there, right? So you're building a little bit of a better asset. The other thing is if you're going to be uh, on vacation, you can still get paid if you have employees, right? There's a bunch of benefits. We won't get into that. But how do you know you're ready? Here's a big thing. If you are booked more than four weeks out any time during the year, you would really, really benefit from an employee. 
And I'll tell you, a lot of people go, well, yeah, my customers are willing to wait three months. Sure. But if you are out that far, you're not advertising. You're not bringing in as much business as possible. A lot of people are like, hey, you know what? I, I actually kind of need a little bit quicker than that. So I got to, I'll let you know. You're losing business by doing that. It's nice to be so booked for so long. What happens when it rains? You're just screwed. What happens if you, you know, get, uh, uh, you know, an injury that, that sidelines you for a couple of weeks? How do you call a week's worth of people like, hey, we're going to have to move you three months? It's very, very hard. If you have a month, four weeks, when you break that in, now you can do all that work in two weeks, which still means you have a cushion with an employee, which means you can go out there and hustle to get more people in. By the way, remember this. If you are out of the field, if you're adding somebody to help with you, work with you, awesome. If you're hiring employees to get out of the field, your entire job then is to get business to keep them busy. That's why when I hired one employee, I went to two employees within the first year and got out of the field. Now, when you say out of the field, it's not, I've never cleaned windows again. No, it was just like the normal day to day was not me cleaning windows. I did clean a lot just because people were up and running and we had big jobs and it was, a, but the biggest point is, is as soon as I got out of the field, eight hours a day were for me to try to build the company. It wasn't to be like, I can sit around now. Right? That's why growth for us happened fast. A lot of the companies that you see really good growth, they get out of the field and now they have a full-time salesperson basically selling, getting new business in as much as possible. Right? So the how you know you're ready is when what you have can be broken into two people. If you're willing to get, I, the company's got to go to another level. The only way I see that happening is hiring somebody. You're ready. If you're thinking about getting an employee, you are ready. If you have three days a week that you sometimes clean, you're not quite ready yet. Unless that's the direction you're going, then you better sell like crazy and find somebody who's happy to take in the three days a week. There is no real wrong time unless it's actually wrong in your head. So anytime you start uh, adding employees or getting employees for the first part is completely right, right? Don't overthink the step of like, I don't know if I'm ready. I don't, should I? I don't, I know it's scary and that's the thing, but remember how scary it was getting into business in the first place. That's the truth of the matter. Employees are scary because you don't know that path yet, but once you get into that path, you'll never not have employees again. So if it's something that you want to have, get it. Are you going to lose some money uh, as far as what you're making? Kind of. Let me explain something to you. <clears throat> write this down. If you got a piece of paper, write this down. It's going to make so much more sense if you can see it. It's very hard to explain. And these are all even numbers. Don't send me messages like, I make more than that. It's not what I'm saying. But say right now your average is $50 an hour. That's what you make. Say you hire somebody in at $15 an hour, right? If they get paid 15, I know there's lots of other costs associated with it, but just hear me out on the numbers. They get paid 15 bucks an hour, you still you keep the rest, right? 35 bucks goes in your pocket, 15 goes to them. Now people look at that and go, oh man, you just lost $15 an hour. No, because now you're doing things that are bringing you more money. But by doing the work, you're only making $15 an hour. If you're the window cleaner, you're only making $15 an hour or whatever. You may start people off at $10 an hour, depending on your area, what you can do. The reason is you're already going to get the other amount. If you're paying somebody 15 bucks an hour, you still get the 35. So that's off the table. No matter if you do the work or they do the work, you're getting still 35. Take that off. We're talking about 15 bucks. If somebody else does it, you're giving them 15 bucks. If you do it, you're getting 15 bucks. So in order, when you look at how much money you're losing, air quotes, you're only going to change your pay by the amount of money you're paying them. And of course, costs and things, but in simple numbers. So really, when you think you're saving, making a bunch more money, you really are just making 15 bucks an hour. The bunch of money you're making or the bunch of money you think you are making, you'd be getting that even if you had an employee. 
right? But now your employee may do 40 hours a week. You hire another one, now you got 80 hours a week getting done. You start getting into like the 10 employees, if you think about that, that's 400 hours of work getting done every week. You can't do that on your own, obviously. And you're still making the $35 an hour on all of those hours. This is why employees make sense. A lot of people kind of go, ah, that doesn't make sense. I can't wrap my brain around it. Wrap your brain around that. It does make sense if that's your goal. Not, you can't do 400 hours yourself. You can't do, you shouldn't, do more than 50 hours a week yourself. Burn yourself out, you destroy your company. So if you're cool with 50 hours of making $15 an hour, because you're going to get the rest anyway, no matter if you hire somebody else, and it's worth your company being exactly where you are right now for that $15 an hour, capped. Awesome. Awesome. That's cool. Like, there is no wrong way for that. There just is no wrong way for that. But what I'm saying is it makes a lot of sense for employees. That's where growth happens. That's where you start building things. But there's downsides. There's downsides to that. And we're going to get to that. First off, the benefits. Like I said, time is huge. You're always going to be able to get more hours with employees because now you're having multiple use. You're having 10, 20, 30. Think about it. If you could have 100 employees and somehow keep them busy, the key, you'd be making $35 an hour. And again, costs are exponential when you start getting bigger ones. This is not does not translate this way, but just for the simple mindset of this. You'd be getting 100 people every single hour. You'd be making $35 in each of them. $3,500 an hour is what you'd make with 100 employees. Again, costs are there, all that fun stuff. But that's the idea. You can't make $3,500 an hour unless you read people's posts on pro window cleaning and Facebook. Everybody claims that they're making that, I think. But uh, in reality, you can't make that, right? So that's kind of where that goes. Benefits time. You can exponentially grow your time. 50 hours is the max you can work and you're going to burn yourself out at 50. You get two employees. Now you're doing 80 hours. You're doing more right away. Now, again, you have to keep people busy. I get that. The money side, if you're going to scale, you're going to scale with employees. You cannot scale past a certain point by yourself. If it's just you, again, 40 hours a week times whatever you're making, $50 an hour, which I know, 65, 75, $85 an hour, that's your max. You can't be more of you. What are you gonna start doing? Working on the weekends and have your spouse hate you? You're gonna lose all that freedom of being able to go to your kid's game or do that hobby you like because now all you do is work? because you're maxed out and the only way for you to make more money or to build your company is to work more. It's a dumb idea. Again, if you're at that place where you're like, I'm happy right where I am. This is not anything against you. I'm just saying, open your eyes to the vision of different possibilities. Money can grow with employees. It can't grow by yourself. You can increase your prices, but that's a cap. I mean, you're not going to be making $3,500 an hour like you would if you had 100 employees, which I don't know any window cleaning company truly that's not like glo like national that has 100 employees, but understand the idea. Growth is there. Money is there. Time and how many hours you can work is there. And the big thing is you're building an asset. A company is an asset. If I have, say I do a million dollars a year, I have X amount of employees, X amount of support staff, all the trucks, shop building. It runs. I can go on vacation. I don't need to worry about it. Same thing as I can sell that to somebody who can do the same thing. Now, of course, if you sell a business to somebody, they may not bring it the same way you are. They may not continue to grow it. They may not know how to run a business. It's not your problem at that point. But you can sell that as an asset. You're not selling a job. You're selling a company. Those are all the benefits. Are there downsides? I don't even know downsides as much as things to think about. First off, costs. Let's talk about that. You have to bring on a crew or to bring on anything, you probably are driving your own vehicle right now. 
for the most part, most people that are owner operators don't have like an extra vehicle and a work vehicle. If you do, sweet. But you got to bring a truck on. Trucks have insurance. Trucks have maintenance. Trucks have fill in the blank. You bring on a truck and now you have an employee who needs gear. So now that truck, if you're going to run multiple trucks, maybe all your equipment can go into that truck. Awesome. If not, they need a belt, they need uh, squeegees, they need all the regular tools, and maybe they need a water fed. Maybe they need all that. They need apparel. And then the cost with hiring is going to be their pay, benefits, and then of course you have to pay a little extra for you know your taxes and things like that on the employee. You pay your side of the taxes. Again, talk to an HR company about that, they'll tell you. So there are costs associated with that, but again, remember, you're making $35 an hour, five of that goes into all this extra stuff. 10 of that goes into all this extra stuff, right? Hiring one employee is cheaper than hiring four employees. Why? Because once you hire two crews, you need to then be the operations officer. You need to then control all of it. If you don't, you need support staff. You need to have somebody in the office who stuffs the envelopes, makes the calls. Do the, if you get calls all day long in the busy season, all day, you can't do that. You have to hire support staff. A support staff member, as you grow, does not make you money. They make things run smoother and give you some of your life back to focus on the things that you're trying to focus on. But support staff is big. If you don't like sales and you like the office work, you may be your support staff and you'll have to hire a salesperson. You still have to hire someone who's not making production. The more people you go. So there's a downside to that. By the way, if you need gear for that extra truck, give me a call 862-312-2026. I'm just kidding. No, not just kidding. Do call me, but I'm just had to add that. Anyway, I digress. The responsibility for somebody is another one that is a burden with employment a burden with employment that you may not have thought about. And I have to say, this one is a little bit weird. You're not as worried about it in the negative. You are worried about it in the negative. They're not as worried about it in the negative. But a big thing with it is that if you have employees, the employee relies on you to now do your job, do your company, do your all of it so that they can have enough work to make money and have a family, to buy a house, to have a car, to pay gas, to buy food, right? If you all of a sudden have a crappy year, it's gonna affect them and that always is weighing on your brain. The big thing that's awesome about that, turn that around, is that when they do buy a house, I've had guys that not married, not you know with anybody, buy a house, their first house, right? Buy a new car and it's like, man, the thing you created from nothing, the company, allowed them to have the life they have. It's pretty awesome. But that always kind of weighs on you. That responsibility for somebody's there. So that helps motivate you like you haven't been motivated before. Maybe if you're only doing, you know, 30 hours right now or something like that, and you're like, yeah, this is fine. I make good money. Well, you get somebody else there, all of a sudden 30 hours isn't enough. You got to rack more up. So it does help you. Another big, big thing that is so much harder in your first employee, second employee, even third employee, is when someone quits. Like I said, you have to build the culture so that an employee doesn't want to quit. When an employee quits, all of a sudden, say you do. You got a guy out there. He's doing 40 hours a week. You're helping, so you're cleaning. Say you're even doing 20 hours with him. You're doing 60 hours of work. He quits. You can't do 60 hours yourself. Say you have a crew of two. They're doing 80 hours, 80 man hours of work a week. They both quit because whatever. They start their own window cleaning company. You can't do 80 hours a week. So now you're scrambling to try to get somebody. There's always a little bit of pressure with employees. I get that, but it's so worth it, right? Those are all kind of the downsides to it. There's just as much good things. But if you want to know anything about temp agency hiring, go back and watch that hiring employees. I've done a couple episodes on that. Maybe I'll do another one on that. But having an employment agency or a temp agency, have your employees. I do the interviews. I find somebody and go, hey, Joe, 
you're uh you're it man i like you i want to hire you great cool you start monday call up my guy say hey man i got a new employee starting on monday cool i'll be there 8 30. we started uh, our trucks rolled at nine by the way um which some people think is super late but with residential i always want to be a little bit later than a little bit earlier anyway he'd be there 8 30 with all the paperwork everything meet you hey nice to meet you man go over everything they're your payroll company they're your they're the ones who now take that employee. They bring them on as their company and let you use them. Yes, there's a fee for that. But with the temp agency, they cover workers' comp. They cover all the taxes associated with it, benefits. If you have programs with benefits, type, paid time, all that is under the temp agency, and they charge you for that. Just so you know, when I was doing it, it was 37% is what I paid. That sounds like a lot, but 30%. So every dollar they make, they actually make a dollar 37 or every dollar they make, you're paying a dollar 37. So if you're paying somebody $10 an hour, it's actually 1370, right? But that covers absolutely everything. And you're gonna be paying this stuff anyway on top of it. So temp agencies are awesome. Look if they have any in your area, temp agencies may really be the way to go. But go back, watch that episode. I won't go too much into it. You know what's going on. But either way, if you are looking to hire somebody, it's really pretty rad. Scary, but rad. Anyway, so thank you so much for uh, watching this episode. Like I said, shameless plug time. Please buy your supplies through me. So I make my cheddar, 862-312-2026. That's my cell phone. Call me, text me, whatever. Get the magazine. American Window Cleaner Magazine. It's not only is it filled with like articles, things you can learn, cool pictures, new gear. It's just cool. Support the culture. Support me. <laughs> um, but get the magazine. I want to make this uh, uh, huge. I want to have 10% uh, of the window cleaning population get the magazine. Right? I think it would be really, really amazing. I think that it can do a lot of good and get a lot of message out there. And it's just cool to have a physical copy in your hands. And it comes with a sticker sheet. Sticker up everything. We have a culture in window cleaning, right? It's like skate culture. It's like something where you get a, uh, a window cleaning squeegee sticker or uh, all these other stickers that you're seeing kind of all combined here. People are like, that is so cool. So get it. Uh, join the sticker club or awcmag.com. Go there. Get a subscription, please. And uh, be absolutely rad. That would be awesome. Either way, until next week, go out there and hire your employee if you want. Otherwise, go out there and uh, be awesome.